equals eight three and two. Eight three two. Yeah. B equals negative two, negative six, negative one. Negative one. one, yeah. Find the projection of u on v. Let's do it. To find the projection of u on v, it's the same in three space as we had in two space. You find their dot product, magnitude of v squared times v. Now you could take this and split up the two pieces, a magnitude here and a magnitude here. Okay, which would give us that unit vector. Or you could do it this way here. It's probably a little easier this way. So, dot product, sit negative 16 plus negative 18 plus negative 2, sum of the products, magnitude of V, square root of 4 plus 36 plus 1 squared times V, negative 2, negative 6, negative 1. Whoa, boy, it's nasty looking. We've got a negative 34, negative 36 over 41. What? Square root of 41 squared is 41. Negative 2, negative 6, negative 1. I, you know, my feeling is at least take a negative out of there and, and make it this. But either way should be okay, okay? Now, uh, unless they want the IJK no notation in there, but either one of these should be okay, okay? All right, any others? What, that's it? Oh, man, okay, that's it, that's it, that's the way it goes. All right, on the test, on Thursday, here you go. You ready? Uh, you guys have a good sense of humor. Eh? Sense of humor. We got some people here with good sense of humor, too. But, but the two of you are kind of in the class by yourselves. You know what I mean? You know? Actually, we're not in the class at all. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> That's what I mean. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. All right. All right. This uh, first section, one through four. What I'm going to do is given, I'm going to be giving you two vectors. Is it all multiple choice? Now? Yep. 25, 20 multiple choice. I'll be giving you two vectors in two space, and I'm going to ask you things like uh, unit vector, okay, in the direction of u, okay, unit vector. In other words, take the vector, divide by its magnitude, okay? Oh, here. Okay. I'm going to ask for dot products. I'm going to ask for the cosine of the angle between the two. I'm going to ask for projection of u on v. I'm going to ask for the sum of the two. I could ask for the, oh, I'm in five and six. I said there's only four questions. All right, I'm going overboard here. Any one of these are possible in, these, in this section. This is fundamental stuff. And I could ask for a constant times one of those vectors, okay? Unit vector is the IJK? IJK are unit vectors. Yeah, it's okay, but there are other unit vectors. Any vector with length one is a unit vector. Those are particular ones, uh, IJ and then Two space or depends on if you're in two space or three space. All right. So in the first section, you got basic uh, two space vector operations. Next section. What's that C U again? Uh, a constant times the vector. Uh, if I ask you for three times u, you multiply each component by three. Okay. Five through nine. It's really the same thing except. I'm going to be giving you vectors in three space. I'll give you three vectors. Okay. 
you got three vectors. I'm going to be asking you things like the um, direction vectors. Okay, I'll ask for the cosine of an angle between two vectors. Okay, it's the same definition as before, except now you've got vectors with three components. I would ask for the cosine of alpha, a direction vector, of vector u. You've got to realize that alpha is the angle the vector makes with a positive x-axis, okay? And what you use for a proxy for the x-axis is the i vector. So what you're doing here is finding the cosine of the angle between vector u and i, i being 1, 0, 0, since we're in 3 space, okay? May you understand that? Okay. All right. I will ask you for a vector um, k, say, perpendicular to two other vectors. In order to find a vector perpendicular or orthogonal to two given vectors, what do you have to do? Cross. You have to cross them, okay? In other words, you cross u with v. That'll give you vector k. I would ask you for the area of the parallelogram determined by those two vectors. And how do you find the area determined by the parallelogram of two given vectors? No. Dot product will help. You can do it with a dot product. Um, but because you can find the angle. But the basic idea is the easiest way to find the uh, area determined by the two vectors, especially if I've already asked you to find the perpendicular to it. So you've already done the cross. The yeah, magnitude of the cross. That's the way to do it. Seven twice. What's that? Seven twice. Yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, man. It's true. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then I ask, like, for the volume of the parallel of pipe in. Oh, geez. This is ridiculous. And how do you find the volume of the parallel of pipe in determined by those three vectors? Yeah, it's a triple scalar product. That's exactly what it is. It's a dot product of the cross product, okay, with the cross product. If I've already asked you the cross product, then all you have to do is dot it with the other vector, okay, which is what I think I probably will do. And then I would ask, believe it or not, what the heck, the height of the parallelogram, parallel pipette, rather. Yikes. Here's the deal. If you know the volume, okay, by taking triple scalar product, and you know the area of the base, it's the magnitude of the cross, then the way to find the height is to do a simple division. Now, there are other ways to find the height. We found the height when we were deriving that formula by finding what the magnitude of the projection was of W on the cross, because that gave us the height. Okay, how much of W is on that perpendicular? That's the height. But I'm telling you this, the better way is if you find the volume, find the area of the base, and then do a simple division. Okay? Isn't the area of the base the area of the parallelogram? So we already have it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 You will. Okay. Okay. So that's the second section. Third section. Okay, I'm going to give you three points. Okay, give me points P, Q, oh, four points, sorry, in four and three space. Okay. I'm going to ask to you to find the equation of the line through any two of them. An equation of the line through any two of them. And what you're going to have to do there, take those two points, find the vector, okay? 
That'll give you the direction vector for the line. Take another point, okay, or take one of the two points, and then find the equation of the line in parametric form, okay? You guys remember, you know, you know how to do that, right? As long as you know how to do that. All right, 11. No, I, I think I'm going to ask it for in uh, parametric form. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if it's symmetric, what, what, uh, no big deal because once you have parametric form, solve for the parameter. That'll put it in parametric, uh, symmetric form. But I, I think I would ask for it in parametric form. Okay. In terms of a parameter. Now, you've got infinite possibilities, as you know, but I'm going to take the most obvious one. All right. I'm, I'm not going to do anything exotic with it. All right. Okay. Um, oh, wow. What the heck? I do this? Yeek. All right. I'm going to ask you for the relationship of two of the lines. In other words, I've given you four points. I'll ask for the equation of line PQ. But then I'm going to ask you for the relationship of line PQ with line RS. Okay. And remember what we had to do there, too. Okay, yeah, you got all, you got kinds of possibilities here. But the first thing to do is see if they're the same line, right? And then see if they're parallel lines. They're parallel lines if their direction vectors are constant, multiple of each other. Okay? Given that they're not the same or parallel, then they're either going to be intersecting or skew, okay, like this. And what do you do? You find where x and y are the same, okay? And then determine if the z are, is also the same at that point. If it is, then you've got intersecting line. If it's not, you have skew lines, okay? All right, so, you're right. so we did that, okay? Okay, whoa, whoa, what the heck, okay. All right, then, oh. Then I'm going to ask for a normal vector. Vector normal to the plane determined by three of the points. So what do you have to do there? You've got these three points. What do you do? You find two vectors, this vector and that vector, so you get these two vectors. And how do you find a normal vector to the plane determined by these two vectors? The perpendicular? Yes, we need the perpendicular by doing their cross product. That is correct. Okay, doing the cross product. So find those two vectors and cross them to get the perpendicular. That's the normal vector you need. And then I'm going to ask you for the equation of the plane. And all you need is a normal and a point, okay, to get the equation of the plane. Oh, boy. All right, here's something I didn't even do. All right, it's, here it is. I knew this was going to happen. Okay, here's the deal. I'm also going to ask you for the cosine of the angle that this plane makes with the xy plane. It's called its angle of elevation. Okay? So here you have this plane. Here's the xy plane coming in like how do you find the angle of elevation between these two? Well, here's what you do. You've got a normal vector to this. You've got a normal vector to this. The angle between the two normal vectors is exactly the angle between the two planes. Okay? The angle that their normal vectors have is the same angle as the angle between two planes. So, all right, let me just say this. So when I want you to ask, uh, find the cosine of the angle between this plane and the xy plane, I want you to find the cosine of the angle between the normal vector to this plane, which you have, and the vector normal to the xy plane. Well, what vector is normal to the xy plane? Z. Z. Good. So I'm asking for the cosine of the angle between the normal vector to your plane and 0, 0, 1. And you should be able to find the cosine of the angle between those two vectors by taking their dot product over the product of their magnitude, which is how you find the cosine of the angle between any two vectors. You with me on that? 
All right. <laughs> All righty. Good deal. All right. That's good. That's good. Andrew, how you doing? Good. All right. Nick, how you doing? Bad. bad? Wait, you said bad or not bad? Bad. bad. Oh, that's not good. Bad is not good. Bad is not good. Although sometimes bad is good. But in some contexts, you know, that's bad. Or, you know, you can, <laughs> <laughs> all right, never mind. Forget that. <laughs> Why does it seem like a lot of stuff? No. Just... All right, never mind. Okay. All right, so cosine of the angle, all right? Okay. All right, next, 15 through 17. There's more. Wow. Given a surface. Holy mackerel. Some quadric surface, x squares and y squares and z squares, okay? I'm going to ask you to find certain traces. So find xy trace. What do you do? You let z equal 0, okay? And determine what remains, what that is. You find the xz trace. Let y equal 0. And yz trace by setting x equal 0. And remember, tomorrow I'll take any questions you have on anything. Okay? That's that section. That should be a breeze. And then 18 through 20 is I'm going to be giving you a point in rectangular coordinates in three space. I'm going to ask you to find, say, R in cylindrical coordinates. or theta in cylindrical or spherical because theta is in both, uh, rho in spherical okay. or phi in spherical. Hmm. I don't, I, the phi one would, would be the most difficult um, one. And if you complete the diagram like I did in class, you could, you could solve for it. Find the cosine of phi. The cosine of phi being this height above the xyz plane, which is z, divided by the hypotenuse, which is rho, okay? S which is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. I don't think that'd be too bad. What do you think? Good Dan, what do you think? Should I put that in there or not? Um, no, I don't want to put that pressure on you. Never mind. Uh, this may or may not be in here. Uh, I wouldn't want you to specifically memorize the thing. The likelihood of this one is probably pretty low, but you should be able to figure it out. Did you make the test yet? I'm going to make it up uh, tomorrow night. Depends on uh, how I feel about you guys tomorrow night. If I'm feeling good about you guys, eh, it'll be an easy test. If I'm feeling bad, and 20s and 30s would be the scores. No. <laughs> no, yeah, it's already made up. You're not smoking, man. No, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, he's not, nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree with that whole philosophy of uh, the, the way. To me, if you got a test with an average of whatever it is, 45 or something, something's well, wrong. Oh, oh, that's all right. All right. Bring it, bring it down a few points. Yeah, I disagree with that. Um, all right, but anyhow. Okay, that's your test. Let's take a look at your lab. Okay, so here we go. Um, 